Hello, this is Cindy Mazzaferro, and welcome to the Powerful Beyond Measure pod show. And I'm so excited to have today a wonderful author and dear friend, Donna Labar. She is a certified integrative health coach, author, and public speaker. Donna teaches individuals how to transform their health naturally with new ideas to reserve common health conditions and illnesses by supporting the body's ability to heal. Donna uses uncommon concepts to achieve quick and easy health restoration. Her new book, Simple Natural Healing, a common sense approach to total health transformation, was released by Morgan James Publishing from New York in September of 2016 and is very popular, a very wonderful read. I've read it myself and extremely helpful in getting people on track fast to wellness. So welcome, Don. I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you so much. It's really nice to be here, Cynthia. And I'm excited for, for you and your show as well. Your book is doing so well. It's, it's just um fun company to be in. It is. We both share the same uh, publishing, Mark and James, and they're wonderful. And if you're interested in publishing your book and you want to reach out to our publisher, send me an email and I'll help make that introduction be there for you. Oh, so, yeah. That's just such a, a super thing because it is a family and I felt like that from day one. So, oh, me too. you know, it's really nice. Good but, I, I'm excited that you're having me on your show and I get to talk about my book because it's really been such a, well, you know, it's so exciting and it just kind of changes your whole life up when you have a book published. It does. It's really a special baby. So let me ask you, what made you write this book? What made you gravitate to nutrition and wellness? Well, actually, a friend of mine had written a book on feng shui, and she had asked me to help her do feng shui for the kitchen with food, because I'm a foodie. Um, I teach people how to cook and how to transform their health naturally, and I've just kind of just done all this just for fun over the years and counseled people on, um, you know, turning diseases around and illnesses around, like what they can do naturally to support their body's ability to heal. So um, so I went to California with my friend, and of course I'm here from Pennsylvania, and she lives a couple miles from me. And she had asked me back in 2012 to go out with her to, to Brendan Burchard. To, I don't know, you know Brendan. I so um, we went out to see him um, to go to Experts Academy, and I really had the intention that I was going as part of her team to help, you know, get her book off the ground. And so when I was there, they um, had me, um, you know, registered and said, what are you going to be speaking about? Because you're going to be presenting for the next four days. So... I was just really shocked about that and um, just, you know, I, I thought, well, I'm a real estate broker. I have been for 35 years and I'm sure no one wants to know about that in California. So I said, well, I could talk about health. So that's what they put me down for. So she and I split up in the next four days I spent presenting about health. And I met another author out there who really um, tried to encourage me to write a book about my thing. She just happened to be at two of my talks and was like, you, you should write a book about this. So when I came home, she contacted me. She had written 12 books. Um, she wrote Happiness Quotations, was one of her latest ones. And she said, if I could find you a publisher, would you write this book? And so I thought... You know, being out there with 800 authors, I thought I probably have a better chance of being struck by lightning than getting a, a publisher. So I just, so I wrote two sample chapters and sent them out to her. And within a week, I had a call from Morgan James Publishing that they wanted to talk to me. So um, after that, it was just all, you know, it, it seems like a world. It took me four years to actually write it and get all the editing done and get it formatted properly and the whole nine yards. Right. But but let's get to the meat and you know bones of the book. So so yeah. tell me what 
is in your book and how can we change what we eat to create the health that we all want? Yes. Well, my book is about the fact that no one cures anyone. Our body, we're born with a miraculous body that has the ability to heal itself. Absolutely. But so many of us are miles off course and our, our body's natural ability to heal has to have certain tools and resources and um, support. And so my work is around anti-inflammatory eating. So there's every disease is tied to inflammation. And so I um, so show people really how to do some different things, getting um, more enzymes into their diet so their body can kind of have a rest and they can have alkalinity in, you know, um, how do you get alkalinity? How do you support your blood pH? Okay, so, let's stop you there because I want you to tell me how can we get more enzymes in our body? Yeah, okay. Let's, so Let's have real practical advice here. Yeah, real practical advice today is, so we can't breathe, none of our organs function, um, our heart doesn't pump, everything works from enzymes in our body, every single function. So our body makes enzymes to digest food, but it doesn't, uh, our bodies don't make an en a never ending amount. There's like a, a, a supply and you can wear it out or you can really not have the ability to make a lot of them. But the beautiful thing about nature is um, if you, raw food comes with all the enzymes necessary to break it down in digestion. The body doesn't have to make anything for that. So the only time we have to make enzymes is if the food is cooked. So food's cooked between 105 and 116 degrees, depending on, you know, what it is. Um, the, the enzymes are all destroyed. So then the body does have to make those enzymes in order to digest. So to simply get your body um, absorbing better and working better, um, if you just eat a raw component with every meal and snack, you will really cut down like half of the work for your body to take in your nutrients. And it, and it actually does it so much more effectively if there, there's raw components present. So I tell people like, you know, eat a handful of berries, put some raw, um, put some fresh herbs on top of your cooked meal. Um, you have tomato slices, cucumbers, you know, whatever you can come up with. But um, fresh herbs, you know, is such a simple thing, a couple berries. So, you know, just trying to get people to think about how they could just grab something to have a raw component whenever they eat. This so is, let me ask you a question. What about if something's frozen, a frozen vegetable or a frozen fruit? Is that still considered a raw? Yes. If it's never been cooked, the enzymes are still active even okay. though it's frozen. Great. Only only when it's cooked, if it, that it gets destroyed. So Wonderful. Okay, so we've heard about enzymes. Now, you were going to go into alkalinity. Yes, yeah, so and alkalinity. Balance is really important. Yeah, alkalinity is really one of the most important things because our body um, tries to maintain a temperature of 98.6, and if our thyroid's working properly, we can maintain that. And um, our, but our body also keeps our blood pH at 7.365. So that's something that it's doing 24 seven working to do that. And why it's important is we have a lymphatic system and we have a blood system. So our, our plasma takes in nutrients and our lymphatic system cleans out debris and toxins and dead cells and, and things and clears them through our liver. So we have lymph nodes in our neck, in our armpits, in our groin area, hundreds of them. And our cells have to go into a lymph node one at a time and get cleaned off and pop back out. And our lymphatic system is like a saline solution. Our tears, our sweat, you know, slightly salty. And that's because of its mineral content. So if you have the right hydration and mineral content, your body is able to not only clean itself and, and um, 
you know, keep your detox going, but it, it's also able to give your cells slightly a negative charge so they float freely. Mm -hmm. And so they can, so nutrients can get where they need to go and so the cells can get cleaned. And so this all happens when the blood, the 7.365 is supported. So, but the thing is, it's not common sense actually because. Um, things that make you alkaline are made, like acidic in their own state. Like, so a lemon, for instance. A lemon is acidic in its own state, but once you ingest it, it becomes alkaline forming in the body. Really? So, yeah. So, so if people test their urine with a pH test strip, like, a, you know, we're looking for the pH test strip to test like between 7 and, and 7.4, 7.5 to, to show that it's what they've ingested has supported the body's overall blood pH that we're driving for. So if people are acidic, um, being slightly acidic is um, really bad in, in a many ways. So that's what we kind of try to teach everyone how to get more alkaline. So once you're acidic, um, like cancer can't grow in an alkaline um, base, but it grows really quickly in an acid base. So if for, for cancer, for instance, it is really important to try to keep your, your pH correct. But also, people, when they start getting slightly acidic, have all kind of health issues then, the acid reflux and heartburn and hiatal hernias and um, GERDs and, you know, the list goes on of, of the um, acid issues and, and the gut issues. But also, inflammatory illnesses that they're slightly acidic, like lupus, um, fibromyalgia, um, chronic fatigue, um, even Lyme disease is, it is an inflammatory illness. So all my work centers around taking um, inflammatory foods off the plate. And well, what would those be? Can you name some of the big inflammatory? And then also what would be, you know, the five top alkaline foods that give you the biggest, you know, bang for your buck, if you will? Yeah, sure. Well, the thing that I, I learned the most when I went for my certification is um, I, I went, when, I, when I went for my studies, I learned hundreds of, of approaches in over 100 different types of classified diets. And the thing that most of them had in common was you're supposed to eat your vegetables. Mm -hmm. And what I learned is that you know, why vegetables are the thing that's most in common is because they're, they're mostly water and minerals, and that's what gives you the, the alkaline, slight negative charge that you need for your cells to, to clean and float freely. So for me, it was really interesting that, like, one, once studying them all, I realized everybody comes to basically the same conclusion that you need vegetables. So... Um, so there are some vegetables that we kind of always look to. Um, uh, we look for at cucumbers and your greens like kale and celery and um, try to get some herbs and spices in there and some roots like ginger and turmeric and lemon, of course, in, in the citrus family, lemon and lime are very alkaline. But then the list goes on and on with your, with your vegetables. You know, the cabbage family is, is very good. And, um, but your dark green leafy vegetables, your spring greens, all of those things are going to go a long way to support your blood pH. Um, sometimes people um, supplement with uh, spirulino, which is, you know, very dark green. Um, or use uh, seaweed uh, or dulse in their, their seasoning and things. So all of those things help keep the body's um, a pH at a nice level that really supports the blood pH and keeps everything calm because we have everything, you know, kind of stimulates hormones. So like our insulin, for example, is a hormone. And um, so, so many things like um, being over stressed, overly stressed will 
um, give you your fight or flight response, which is, of course, your cortisol and your adrenaline. Well, they're very, um, they really create a lot of acid in the body because they're designed to make all of your cells like jump to attention and right. so you get hot and red faced and so they're very like acid forming um, would be a challenge for your blood pH. Um, and during those times you would actually need more alkaline food. Yes, yes. So and you, yes, you never so I, have to worry about getting too alkaline. Um, it, most people would have a hard time getting too alkaline. Um, you know, I, I think you could. Uh, some people get so fixated on being alkaline that they don't eat any foods that are acid forming. And of course, that's um, not in balance. You really do need some acid forming foods. So I try to um, train people to have 75% of their plate vegetables. So of that 75%, half of that would be a salad, something raw, and the other half would be cooked vegetables. And then the 25% that's left would be something from the acid forming category, you know, so a protein, um, you know, that, so your, your beans, your legumes, your fish, your meat, eggs, you know, whatever someone might want to pick. Um, that would be a, a balanced plate with, with that many vegetables and, and a protein source like that that's more acid forming. So that would keep their, their um, blood pH supported nicely and, and then you can use things like berries and nuts and seeds as like a, a garnish or you know a condiment so um, instead of eating a lot of them. So I try to have people watch out for sugar. You know, we're hearing everything about that these days. Exactly. And, um, and also, people tend to not realize that their carbohydrates are their sugars. So I train um, them that your body only knows sugar, fats, and protein. It doesn't know anything about carbohydrates because as soon as it gets a starch, it converts it right away into sugar. Well, also, aren't fruits also one that convert right to sugar as well? Oh, yes. And fructose, you know, has to be metabolized through our liver. And um, in, the problem with commercial growth is that they know we like sweets, so they actually breed all these fruits to grow, you know, with a higher sugar content. So we like them, you know, you think of these little oranges that come now that are 10 times sweeter than what an old fashioned orange was, you know, and people like pass by the big orange so they can have this little tiny orange and, and they're much sweeter. So um, a lot of the fruits are just truly grown to have a very high sugar content. And, it, you know, it just wasn't like that 25 years ago. Right. Now, what about vinegar? You hear a lot of people will tell you vinegar is very important. Is that considered acidic or alkaline? Well, in its natural state, that's another example. Um, I have people use raw organic apple cider vinegar. Um, it's very interesting because it's, it, again, is acidic in its natural state. So sometimes when people go to their doctor, their doctor will say, you need more acids for your stomach, for your digestion. So um, apple cider vinegar to a doctor would meet that. It would be acidic. And so someone that teaches anti-inflammatory eating, like me, I say you need organic raw apple cider vinegar because it's um, alkaline and it is alkaline forming in the body which is interesting because it really gives you the hydrochloric acid you need in your stomach but it becomes very alkaline as it continues. Now you say it has to be organic, it can't just be any apple cider vinegar then? No, well if to work the best it's best to have a raw organic because um, there's a lot of pesticides used for apples, especially, and um, the, the raw gives you a kind of a probiotic for your gut, so you're getting the friendly bacteria. So it really um, enhances the whole process so nicely. So people use it for a weight loss. They use it for just purely digesting better. Um, it's great for your gallbladder. 
Um, what about the vinegar that when it has mother? They, they say there's yeah, mother in it. That's the mother. Yeah, like um, one brand that a lot of people use is Bragg's apple cider vinegar. That's that's very popular. But it, it, in that um, company puts right on the front the, the mother in quotes, you know. But, you know, that's just, it's, the, it's fermented and it's raw. So, um, you know, that, that uh, property is in there. You can see it. It's kind of cloudy. It's not clear like the processed um, cooked vinegar. So are you supposed to shake that up every time you use the vinegar to make sure the mother's dispersed in it? Um, you, you don't really have to. Some people are afraid of the mother. <laughs> <That's what laughs> they don't want that. <laughs> but, but you don't yeah. actually ingest the mother. It's just the mother's within the it culture. Within that, in the, yeah, and the culture is really all through it, so that's not as important. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, well, this is very interesting. So, what kind of um, well, the one thing I wanted to ask is, does our metabolic system change as we age, and are there certain foods that we should you know stick away from as we get older? I've heard people say not to have as much dairy products or lactose free as you get older because our stomachs don't digest the lactose as well. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, actually, what happens as we age is our um, for the most part, most of our enzymes are made in our pancreas, and, um, and, and so our insulin, the hormone, is made there. So there's a lot of um, enzyme and hormone action going on in our body. And as we age, we, we just um, make less and less enzymes. But my um, contention is you wouldn't wear yourself out in that respect so fast if you did have raw foods all along the way. You'd really kind of keep your pancreas healthy and not so used as if you were eating cooked food for the most part all the time because then there's a huge demand on your pancreas then to make all the enzymes so well I so, didn't realize I was doing so well because I actually don't care for cooked vegetables oh I only I was, like raw vegetables and the only corn the only vegetable I like cooked is really um corn and I don't do that because it's a real starch or yeah, sugar, you know right. so I it's a very rare treat like corn of the cob but typically I I always have just raw vegetables, beans well, or salad. You're ahead of the curve. And, you know, what happens as people get older is they'll say, gee, I used to be able to eat that and I can't eat it anymore. Right. And I used to yeah. be able to eat those and I can't. And really what that is is their body is just slowly not making those enzymes. So, so they can, um, you know, try to just reboot their system, like give their body a rest. And when I say take in, um, uh, like do an anti-inflammatory diet, take some foods off your plate. I take all the starches off their plate for 30 days when I'm coaching them. So it would be your corn, your rice, your white potatoes. They can have sweet potatoes, but no, no white potatoes. Um, no grains, no oats, no bread, no pasta. You know, just nothing with grains at all. And, and that's because of the enzyme, not because it's a soup. Acidic. No, it's actually because of the starch and the conversion. To the sugar. Um, yeah, the conversion to sugar right away. Mm -hmm. So you know, the body starts that process as soon as that starch enters our mouth because we have um, amylase in our saliva. That's breaks. That's the um, enzyme that breaks down carbohydrates. So the whole process to get that turned into sugar right away, our body gets right at it. So we have. You know, our blood only has about a teaspoon of sugar at any given time. And so once it gets enough, the receptors on the cells close, and then you have all the sugar and okay. insulin floating in your blood, and you get, real, you get sleepy, you need to take a nap while your body does its cleanup work. So, so it's really um, important to get someone's metabolism back to – um, snappy and you know start getting all of their systems back into balance it's really important to take all these culprits off the plate and, and the thing is some of them actually cause problems for people they either have an allergy to it an intolerance to it um, and or they just don't make the enzyme to break it down and so by taking them off your plate and getting clean and 
and getting your blood working nicely and your lymphatic system working nicely again. Um, I don't tell people, you know, you have to stay on something forever. This is kind of like a cleanse, a, a way to cleanse mm -hmm. and get your cravings all to go away and get your energy back. And then I have them um, step their food back in, and um, but one category at a time. So you could kind of see if something causes them bloating and gas and they just don't feel good then we know, okay, they definitely have problems with that food category. So we can kind of see, do they, you know, they might want to still try to eat it, but take a digestive enzyme in order to do that. So okay. I've been lactose intolerant my whole life. And, you know, I, I carry lactate in my purse. So if I feel like having something because the rest of the crew is, I'll, I'll chew a lactate and, you know, have the ice cream. So, but, you know, for me, I, I have to kind of plan ahead. I wouldn't just do that without taking an en a digestive enzyme. So, so you, you mentioned the acid reflux. So that tends to mean if they're having any that regurge um, or even difficult swallowing. Is that the same? Would that be the same thing? Difficult swallowing too? Yes. Um, um, sometimes the swallowing can be tied to their digestion and, and acid um, reflux issues. And just the, you know, it's hard when people have a lot of acid, it's hard for them to understand that they don't have enough acid in their stomach. But it's really their body overcompensating for the fact that they don't have the right amount of hydrochloric acid in their stomach. So once they use something, say, like apple cider vinegar and water to start normalizing that, all these things start just calming down and going away. And honestly, when I have people just do this for 30 days, they, they just feel amazingly better because all of that calms down. So, you know, it's it, it, the swallowing. I have a lot of people that do have swallowing issues in it um, and breathing. Um, sometimes tied to it and a lot of times that's hydration and minerals you know um, people tell me that they try to get healthy and they eat a lot of fruits and vegetables but when we actually get down to journaling them um, we find out that they're eating a lot of fruits and not really so many vegetables mm -hmm. so you know in that case the sugar is really making you know things go up and down and um, you know, once you get all those sugars out of their system, they everything kind of, their blood sugar comes into balance, blood pressure, um, they're hydrated more properly, so they breathe better, and they swallow better. Everything, um, we call, you know, we call it homeostasis, but really it all comes back into balance. So, so my work is all about, um, my, my book itself goes into all the body systems and function like proper elimination and, um, you know, what the tie between hot flashes and panic attacks and insulin resistance. You know, I, I have um, found a, a correlation there and really give people um, ways to stabilize their blood sugar and their panic attacks go away mm -hmm. and their hot flashes go away and their insulin resistance goes away and they go back into a balance so they're not heading toward uh, being a diabetic. Um, if they feel like they're going through menopause, their hot flashes actually stop. And, um, and I have a lot of people that have anxiety attacks these days and panic attacks and if you get their blood sugar stable, they no longer have those. So it's really the body's natural mechanism to shake you up a bit to get you to do something about the fact that your blood sugar is so unstable. It's very dangerous. So really interesting. And as you know, and as you, we talked about earlier, the stress, you know, and our stress is often tied to our emotions, how we're mentally perceiving something, how we're integrating with it. Um, and then the emotional part, and that all deals with stress and um, outcomes and responsibility. And so that's changing your physiology. Yes, yes. So it's and not just what we eat, it's also what we're, how we're experiencing life, which is yes. what my book is about, about living and being happy in the moment. But it's a very complicated intricacy, which was I was so excited about having you here because, you know, you can be eating everything right, but if you're mentally 
perceiving everything you're doing in life as a struggle, it's a challenge, it's an obstacle. You know the outcome is going to be negative before you even start it. Your inner health, even nutritionally, isn't going to be absorbed. You're so right, Cynthia. Like when I teach a seminar or a workshop, I tell them I, I'm teaching you that it takes three environments that you need to focus on in order to get your health turned around. And, you, you know, you have to really do at least two of them. So one is what you eat. Um, the other environment is what and who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. And the third environment is how you mentally process all of that. You know, so all of those things affect our body's chemistry and how we heal and how we sleep, you know, and how we get rid of our toxins and how our gut feels, how our heart feels, how our head feels, you know. Exactly. So, it's fascinating, but our body does want to heal. It does. Innately. And um, and I think if you're attuned to that intuition and to that, that common understanding of what is right and listening to that, you'll know if you need to eat more alkaline food or more acidic food to get a more balanced um, homeostasis, as you put it. Right, right. And I, I really see people, once they, real, they start walking down that road, ever so gently, you know, you don't, a lot of times people want to program and they want to slam it into place. But I think if you just start adding some things in and just start crowding some of the old habits out, um, be gentle with yourself, be caring and, you know, treat yourself kindly like you would someone else. A lot of times we treat a stranger a lot better than we treat ourselves. Absolutely. And, you know, so if a stranger came over, we put a nice, sweet, good looking meal together for them. But if they didn't come over, we might just eat something horrific and run out <laughs> the door. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just try to create such an awareness about how we just give ourselves a raw deal uh, for long periods of time, sometimes decades. Right. Now, you mentioned about the vinegar and water. Do you just do it every day and drink it? And how much vinegar, how much water? Oh, yeah. You can just do like a teaspoon of vinegar in like a little tumbler of water. So it would be like a cup of Maybe water. Eight ounces of water. Yeah, and, you know, for me, I kind of do maintenance doses of that. Um, you know, if I'm, I'm out in, you know, at a, at a party or a meeting and I, I eat something that I think you might have a hard time digesting, I'll just come home and drink that right away. Another thing that I do that's really um, can be helpful is taking some baking soda in water. So... Um, just maybe like a half a teaspoon of baking soda and water can help get you alkaline and help settle your stomach down if it's a problem. So that's uh, that would be, you know, better to do than taking antacids and, and things like that because the body naturally makes sodium bicarbonate and if you're not in balance, it really doesn't make it as much or, you know, enough to make you feel good in your gut. So... Um, actually, um, I actually went to a salt um, kind of, a, it was a yoga and it was a salt and you bought these salts and you're supposed to put them in water and it would dissolve into it and then you're supposed to take some of this salty water and put it into more water, diffuse it a little bit, dilute it and, um, and drink it. So yeah. is that the same principle? Well, and you'll read about that in, in, you know, a lot of different things to use your salts. I, I of course, um, have people do Himalayan sea salt because it's raw well harvested. It has the enzymes present, and it has um, all your trace and your primary minerals. And what, what I try to explain to people is in the holistic, holistic world, we call them your salts. You need your salts. But... Um, our commercial salt is so processed, you know, it's bleached, it has anti-caking agents uh, uh, with an aluminum base added to them, and they're fracked and, you know, cooked at 1600 degrees, but these natural salts are just raw harvested from the ground, and, um, you know, you that's how you get them, so, but the interesting thing is, um, you know, if you go to, to the store to buy a reduced salt 
normal table salt because your doctor said no more salt for you. Mm -hmm. So you go to buy some kind of light salt. If you look at the ingredient that replaced sodium, it's potassium. Right. Because potassium is very salty to the taste. And, you know, potassium is very good for our heart. And then magnesium, um, it, if you've ever heard of taking an Epsom salt bath, you know, people, if they're sore and achy or swollen, they'll soak in Epsom salts. And that's right. magnesium. Magnesium is very salty to the taste. Um, calcium, the same way, salty. So a, a lot of um, the primary minerals and some of the trace minerals taste salty. Mm -hmm. So holistic um, practitioners will have you do like a method of, of detox like you did with the salts. Um, I like them to be part of your everyday life so you're not, you don't necessarily need to supplement with a mineral supplement. You're using um, Himalayan sea salt on your food and it's all your minerals so you can, you know, enjoy it and not feel like you, you can't put much on. Um, and then I also have uh, my clients put a pinch of it in their water because what I try to explain to them is if your body just worked to get you at a perfect 7.365 and that's like it totally balanced your fluids with your minerals so it could have that perfect balance and then you just took 20 ounces of water with no minerals in and poured it in now your body's got to work to try to rebalance because it just got all this water with no minerals. So it's going to send you to pee, to pee a lot because it wants to get rid of that fluid. So if you put your minerals in with it and you don't, you don't want it to taste salty, um, seriously, just a pinch in 16 or 20 ounces will do the trick. And that, your body's able to use that fluid then because it's similar to the fluid it's trying to maintain at that 7.365 with the minerals in the water. Very interesting. Wow. This is there's so much information. Um, you know, Donna is a wealth of um, knowledge and, and expertise. And, you know, again, her book is so powerful. It's simple. Natural yes, healing. Here it is. Yes, and it's a common yes. sense approach. And I, I recommend you all go out to CVS or Rite Aid and get the little pH pH strips and test your urine. Check where your baseline is and see if you're more alkaline or more acidic. And then um, what's your health like? You know, make a journal and, and read Donna's book. Go out and order it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can order online, get it at bookstores. Um, and I know your website is um, www.donnalabar.com. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. L-A-B-A-R. Yeah. Uh, one R. And, and real, you know, truly reading my book, I tried to keep it um, with all just the important juicy stuff that you could go out and do and see a, a difference right away. Because it's very discouraging to make these changes and then it seems like everything's the same. So... Um, you know, it's really written in a way to give you a, 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 some real juicy stuff to be able to go do. So. And that's what we want. We want practical advice because I think in our world, a society that we are trying to create a healthier um, diet regime, and I hate to use the word diet, you know, nutritious regime maybe is better, right? Um, and also for our children, we have obesity is, that is way up there in, in percentages, and it's involving our children as well. So, um, you know, you really need to check out Donna's book. It's fabulous and it's user friendly and it will definitely impact your life in, in ways right away, directly. Well, thank you, Cynthia. I've just, I've really been enjoying my book because, you know, we don't know how our books are going to be received when we're writing away. Right. And, um, you know, I've just had people so enjoy it and buy it for their kids and their, you know, friends and they just, you know, they think of anyone that's having a health struggle and they want them to have it in their hands because they know they're going to get some, some practical things, you know, you don't need to go out and spend a thousand dollars. Like this is stuff that you could just start putting it together yourself. And, and plus it kind of guides you as to what is normal and what's not normal about your body function and how you can tell. And that, I think the science behind it all is really 
kind of fascinating to people. So right. we can get pretty far in life and not really know how this um, piece of equipment we were given <laughs> works. It's like a, it's so much more complex than any computer ever made. And we're all responsible for one of them, you know, to, to operate. So, Well, Donna, when I first met you through my publisher, we were chatting. I said, we make a great team for a workshop because, um, you know, there's so much that goes on with how we view food, the emotions we have, the way we think about our food, that we're changing the way our water molecules are um, chemically or structurally um, the health of it. Um, Dr. Emoto, everybody that knows him has done fabulous work on how negative thoughts, emotions can impact the health of our water. Well, our body's made up of 80% water. And so if we're thinking negative thoughts and feeling negative, then the water molecules that are in our body is destructive, damaged. And so then you bring in the pH part to it and lacking the enzymes and the hormonal in response it's really a holistic way of changing your life and and um, the dietitian or the uh, nutritional component is is one aspect but you know learning to view life and experience life in a, a much more satisfactory and happy way can totally also um, change your health and happiness well and i i really think your work encompasses the other two environments that i don't really delve into as much i try to you know, get people over to work, you, you know, your work to help them with their, how they surround themselves, um, how, how their life is forming, uh, and how they think and process all this. Because one thing that is the American way is we get our stress response turned on, and we don't know how to turn it off and get our relaxation response on. And we're really designed to very seldomly use that fight or flight response, but we're in a society that turns it on early in the morning and keeps it right on. And, and some, you know, most of the people that I coach with more serious health problems, they can't sleep, you know, they, they just, they, they don't go to the bathroom, right? They either go too much or not at all and like you know they come in with a, a laundry list of, of sad situations with their body because it's finally just decided not to play anymore but I think a great deal of that is because that life has just taken them you know by their hair and they they can't deal with it anymore and then the body just starts to fail them so your work is so important. It's just, you know, it's two-thirds of the deal. I can get them eating their lemons, but if they still are a mess and they, they can't get their life straightened out and they can't get their thoughts calmed down and, and find new places to put their thoughts that are more productive and feel better, it, it's really very hard to keep the the food and and the um, that side to balance everything. Exactly. There's both all three parts as you talked about is so integral. And this has really been fascinating. We could go on and on again. I really would love to have a, a weekend retreat where we actually could um, team up and have people come and, and have a conference with us. I think we could really look at them holistically and really make differences in their life. So maybe that's something we can do next year. All right. Um, Reach out to me. I'd be glad to. We're not that far away. No, we're not. And it just it seems so parallel. And it really is always going towards perfect health, yes. which is, again, a whole mindset of what is perfect health, you know? Yes, that's um, right. So thank you so much, Donna. You, um, your book is so exciting. I love it. And I'm going to go back and read it again. Um, again, go check Donna's website out, DonnaLabar.com, and go out and look at her book on Amazon. Check out the testimonies, the reviews. They're great. Simple, natural healing. Hold up your book one more time, Donna. Okay. One more time, yes. Thank you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge, and um, maybe we'll have you back again and, and do a little sequel. Thank oh, you. Again. I love that. Thank you, Cynthia. Take care. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining Bye. us. All right. Bye-bye.